So um, before I jump into exactly like what the product I actually worked on, uh, I'm just going to give you kind of just as my agenda for what we'll discuss. So um, the first step I always like to say in identifying or in um, building an e-learning platform um, is making sure you identify the objective and goals, right? Like why are you building this, right? <laughs> uh, we'll look at how you create a pilot program to get started, um, how you validate that pilot program, um, mapping any unmet needs um, after you've gone through the validation process, um, choosing, oops, sorry guys, I probably should that, so I can keep that going. Um, choosing uh, the right technology, um, thinking about, we'll go a little bit into like LMS or learning management systems, um, and measuring the effectiveness of your platform um, so that you know you're going the right track <laughs> and meeting your goals. So, the first thing in identifying your objectives. Um, so, what's the purpose of this training platform? Is it for employees? Um, is this an educational platform for end users, consumers? Is this something you're trying to sell or build in conjunction with something else you may be selling? Um, so, I have actually done the bottom. Uh, I worked early on in my career on a fintech platform. Um, and we created uh, an educational platform that people gave them a subscription to get access to to help them reach whatever their financial goals were. Um, but in this situation with Estee Lauder, um, we, the goal of our project was to build a platform that trained sales associates, the, the, the associates that are uh, working on the floor at the department stores, um, this was to, to be able to train them on how to sell and use the actual like beauty products. Um, so traditionally, Estee Lauder companies, um, which is a pair company of 30 plus brands, um, would set up these biannual regional training conferences. They're really expensive, a lot of work goes into there. <laughs> you have to transport people to whatever central location is um, in the region, and this is like a whole work, so you do this everywhere. Um, and they wanted to be able to like streamline uh, that operation and scale back, um, and also be able to, uh, in order to like launch products sooner, they wanted to be able to be, uh, reach their retail associates and be able to quickly train them on these products. Go. Uh, the next, the first thing, um, or the next step is setting goals, right? Um, understanding the overarching company or business goal. Um, like I just mentioned um, with Estee Lauder, their goal, the overall goal was really to like um, streamline their educational operations. Um, in some markets like the US, they were completely removing them. So the only way that these regional associates can receive training was through this app, in addition to some like support from a um, field trainer, but that's someone who would uh, maybe pop into a location or store once a month, right, if they don't really want. Um, to find your project goal, so if you're like, okay, I'm going to build this uh, e-learning platform, right, What's the goal of the platform, right? Um, and how does that support the overarching business? Um, and then also prioritize. Because <laughs> you know what? When you're working as a huge organization or a huge team, sometimes uh, you have different uh, business stakeholders who all have their own goals for their teams, and they all uh, want you to be able to accomplish them with your app or your platform or whatever it is you're building and sometimes you can't meet all of those goals. So you need to prioritize um, which are the most important for your team to be successful. Here are a lot of goals. I kind of already went through most of for you guys, but yes, yeah, streamlining expenses, drive revenue uh, via in-store, the retail channel. Um, and then our project goal, um, you know, since we were eliminating buying sales, Training conferences, um, 
we wanted to be able to build something that could one um, essentially train oops, that could one train the retail associates on new products. So um, what in our MVP or like our minimal viable product for our pilot program, we needed to be able to um, have a platform that we were going to release content around two major uh, product releases. Um, we also wanted to be able to um, provide an interactive and um, accessible central resource hub for our retail associates to always go back and kind of like freshen up on you know some of their products, such as like bestsellers, um, since you know they may not have those large conferences anymore. Um, and then also save money. <laughs> um, and so yes, yeah, create your pilot program. Um, so just thinking about um, what it is when you launch this, like what are you trying to learn, right? Um, what it is determining what your MVP requirements. So what's the, what does the actual like first version of this app you know, or web platform actually look like a program. Um, create a plan to launch and test it, right? Um, and then just determining what success looks like. So keep it in mind that you need to be able to um, measure certain things, like what are those KPIs? Um, and as you'll see moving along, like that's really important, especially when you're really up to be this complicated, um, because you wanna make sure you have access <laughs> to the right like data to be able to track this big guess. Um, so here's what we did with SLR. Um, so here's just like some of the main three questions we had. And it was like, would retail associates log in and use this? Um, although we are an internal product, excuse me, um, it was like an internal platform. We don't really own these people <laughs> and I don't have access to them. So we still had to do some, like get some buy-in, right? And like there was some sort of marketing that needed to take place because I, I can't force, or no one essentially could force, even their sales managers force these people to like log in and actually use it. I mean, in some situations where there was no more uh, of these training conferences, it was your goals and your commission probably you know, relied on this, but like, um, you know, we had to still keep that in account. Um, and that mattered because of, you know, we had to keep that into account for um, when we're thinking about building this platform. Uh, how often would they use this app outside of the new launches, right? We just wanted to test, like, this is kind of just testing the content, right? Like the, the actual, um, um, e-learning experience that the user would have, right? Um, what kind of content assessment would present for? So, um, you know, is it you kind of play around with like learning pathways, self-guided, thinking about how you actually want to structure your curriculum and your modules. And then, um, so we just our MVP requirements with strength associates on how to sell best seller. So, literally, we have has over a hundred SKUs or products. <laughs> Anybody in the retail space or beauty space, that is a lot. Um, and so we could not get all of that information <laughs> up on this platform. Um, so we just wanted to start with best sellers, like 10 of the best products, and that's what we would uh, create content around and focus on, um, focus the curriculum around. And then onboard and new train, onboard and train new hires when they hit the sales floor. So um, some of these new hires, like if you were hired today, um, because in some markets there was like a lot of um, gaps in how like what the actual in-person new training conferences look like in meetings, um, we had to just assume that people, some of these people, excuse me, we had to assume that most of the associates would not have access to it. So we had to build it as if like, hey, I am new, what are the, the things I absolutely need to know if I needed to start with you like tomorrow, basically. Um, so we had to create a, um, 
your they call it you for start, but it's just essentially like your essentials that you need to know so that you can actually be uh, pretty successful at your job. <laughs> um, and then we had a your rollout plan. Um, so for us, because we're global, we had to create a plan that was attainable that at least thinking about like, hey, um, measurable, and we wanted to start with English speaking markets because we knew that we could quickly get the data from there. Um, we didn't have to think about the translation process, um, and it was just the best place to start in order to um, test for three months. And iOS and Android were the uh, uh, mobile apps we were launching. Um, validating the pilot program. Um, so your next step is, okay, you know you're approaching three months, um, or three months is over, like, was your pilot program, was your MVP successful? Like, did you uh, learn what you were actually trying to learn? Um, did it meet your first set of goals? Um, and this is important because now you need to, this, all the information you the quantitative and qualitative information, you now need to um, use that to decide, okay, what are the improvement we need to make? Are we going to continue with this? What direction are we going to go into? And also just prioritizing all the things you have to think about. Because <laughs> the reality is you can't fill everything. You can't fill, you know, everything for everybody. Um, so in our experience, um, we identified that yes, uh, the retail associates will log into use. <laughs> we had some pretty great success. Um, for our English speaking markets, there are about like fifty thousand users, and we had about like about a good amount of if, like thirty thousand actually like logged on and were like actively using it. Um, and for us, we kind of identified active users as like on average at least one time a week. Um, but we did find that they were logging in at least twice a week um, outside of like new launches and like big holiday campaigns. Because some of those things like they would automatically want to log into because it, we just launched a new product we need to know. <laughs> um, so that was exciting news for us. That means they were actually like for us that said they were like Engaging with it, they like the content. The content is resonating with them. Um, I actually went into some in-store surveys, and I would like go into a couple of different stores with my team. We would travel around and um, just get some feedback, and we saw that how they were using it. Um, and so these were just all like the data that we were collecting, um, so that we could plan for our next version. Um, and then for our quantitative data, so there's a couple of things. There's like just engagement. Um, oh my God, you're so sorry. Okay. So because uh, actually building out a green deck was such a huge undertaking, <laughs> and it was always like a big uh, discussion with the company. Um, in the beginning, I literally was using Google Analytics and Fire, Fire, excuse me, Firebase, which is like the Google, Google Analytics version for mobile apps. Um, and so from there, um, we did essentially kind of build like a small little free dashboard for ourselves. Um, as like the like we essentially call ourselves kind of the global admins of like the product and okay. Um, but most of the information came through um, Google Analytics. Um, and then so that's how that's what we use to pretty much just um, measure engagement around like just traffic essentially, right? Like sessions, kind of these like basic like after using all those things. Um, and then you also want to be able to track the module or curriculum performance, so like grades, scores, like whatever it is that you create, you need to make sure that like you are, you have um, it set up so that you're collecting all of this information around how well they're doing, right? 
like um, on all of your actual quizzes. <laughs> um, you know, we implemented likes and shares and stuff like that on like some of our like uh, blog like content. So that's also what we use to just measure like engagement as well. Um, and then also just like the market sales. Um, and so that's the information we were pulling from the doors, the stores, like how um, these, essentially how well are the retail associates actually like selling? Is there a connection between how well they're doing to how well they're selling? So we would take like our best selling products, right, and see like, is there a correlation between, okay, if they're all reading this particular, uh, or taking this particular quiz and they're scoring really high, does that translate, is there a correlation to, um, are they actually selling that product really well? And we did find that there were some correlations. Um, and we also found that um, although it was a, an app or tool for the retail associates, the videos were actually really, like they liked it and they were really great, that they were using it as a selling tool with the customers, um, which we thought was very interesting. <laughs> And so if you were a customer that was on the fence about something and you wanted to actually like see how it was used in addition to experiencing it on yourself, um, you were like more in basically uh, inclined to buy it. So what we did after our, after our pilot program for like three months, and we did realize, and not that we real, we didn't know this going in, but we didn't really work out the kinks yet. <laughs> Um, and we found, uh, ran into some roadblocks around translation and, and like notification. Um, and so that's because, um, oops, all right. As you'll see here, sorry. Okay. Uh, as you'll see here, um, in the next few slides, when you are choosing like your LMS that you want to use, um, or tools around like just learning management system in general, um, you really have to understand like what it is that what attributes you really want, and making sure that that system has it because there are so many tools, like so many tools, <laughs> and you're. Just, you're gonna, in order to like kind of sift through all of them um, and figure out what works for you, because what you, what you really don't want is to use one, launch with it, and you're like, oh my gosh, I hate this, <laughs> because it's really hard to go back. <laughs> Especially something this large and with all the research that go into it. Um, and so we knew that the next thing on our roadmap and what we needed to um, relaunch with to the rest of the markets, um, translation and notifications. The notifications just around like notifying users around like when um, new content is available and your score, the gaming, like um, grades and, and all of those things. Choosing a learning, learning management platform that works for you. Why this is super necessary is because, um, like I mentioned, a lot of time and effort goes into um, working with these learning management tools. Um, and you'll as you'll see, some of them are expensive, some of them need advanced coding, um, and you also want to make sure that as you grow, you have a platform, your own platform that grows with you. Um, so very, very important. Um, and what a basically a learning management system is, um, is basically what holds all of your like content and curriculum. Um, so your courses, all of your, some of them you can even pull like your ideas. You can, some of these you can even, um, they have built in like, like click funnels and sales and marketing funnels, all of those things, like all of your database. So like the grades, the scores, like all the data around that, right? The engagement, traffic. Um, so like if you 
what is below. Reporting tab, um, reporting um, dashboard, and any like documentation if there is a dance company involved and <coughs> you're building something out. Um, so yeah, this is essentially learning management system. Um, here's just like a checklist of things you want to make sure um, your learning management system works or has. Um, you also want to make sure it's responsive, like mobile responsive. Um, you also want to make sure that can it be customized and personalized for yourself. Is there customization and personalization tools for your user, your end user as well? Uh, like analytics reporting tools, and then also um, pricing plans. Like, does it allow you to charge per course? Does it allow you to charge per user? This is like if you were creating something that you were actually selling to like an end consumer, basically. Um, so yeah, here's just like questions around just like things to consider when you're choosing an LMS, like is it stable, reliable, like um, can it handle a lot of data, can it handle a lot of users, traffic, what happens is when there's like thousands of people on at the same time, right? Like is it going to cause a lag? You don't want a lag because if it's slow, we're going to get really, really frustrated and not want to use this, right? Especially if they're like forced to use it or like not incentivized to use it. Um, things to think about, um, also, um, making sure, oh, does it have necessary features for you to scale? Like, can you gamify your content and curriculum? Like, can you have badges? Can you um, have it, like, a user collect points and redeem the points for something, right? Thinking about what that looks like. Um, also, um, how does it manage users? How does it manage content? Um, do you want your users to have their own, like, dashboard? Right? What do they see, like in terms of a portal? Right? Can they like track their own success? Um, can they see that over time? Uh, and then also just client support for yourself, right? Like if I'm having issues, particularly we particular rise, the client support is okay. But <laughs> like you know, if I'm having like issues, um, will someone help me? And is it like twenty four hours a month? So this is essentially how the tech behind um, our LMS um, and how we use our offering tool. Super technical, but we had to pull the information from um, the offering to Articularize, and it would come in like some we call it a form, essentially format, and then we have to put that into our, like, our LMS uploaded, and then that's how it would appear. And uh, measuring success. Um, so once you, this is the key to when you're launching any digital product, the fun doesn't, you know, this is where all the fun begins. <laughs> and it is making sure you are tracking um, all of the KPIs that you have already identified at the beginning, like your team is, is sat and, and identified, you know, what a success is like for them. Um, and so, making sure like you know if one of our goals objectives was for the company to take money like what are we looking at to show that right like uh, look at markets where there is no more classroom instruction and there's only e-learning right has those gone up and they've gone down we did fortunately experience those go up pretty like relatively which was great um, and then also like do you find a correlation between product releases and, and their corresponding content release? Right, this one's going down there. Um, did you see any impact? Um, and so, also, just like, does this increase revenue sales or their impact? Um, so, just breaking down, like, uh, look at past annual education operational costs, right, versus annual sales uh, for retail associate, associate distribution channel, and determining what the return on spend was or return on investment. Um, this is all pretty high level, but um, just making sure that you're actually determining if you met any of the goals that you originally were set out to uh, achieve by building this platform. Um, and looking at content, does the content increase the productivity of retail associates? So 
looking at the scores of modules, uh, is there a correlation of like what content has the most engaging high scores for, to sales? Uh, you can drill down by like making sure you know their market, region, city, store. Um, also by the many types of different users that we were accounting for using this platform. Although many of them were the retail sales associates, but managers and trainers as well. Um, and then we slowly were trying to build out a way to detect, um, you know, how was their impact as well, like measuring like their scores as a manager of the store, right, or as a trainer of like a few of the stores. And then also looking at retention and engagement um, with the platform. 